It just goes to show no matter if you're heavily involved, I'm talking knee deep in the mud. It does not matter what you have done, whether you have done murders, whether you have done this, whether you have done that for, for highly influential individuals. It does not matter. You could completely disregard your whole entire life and your fellow homeboys will put you on disregard at the drop of a hat. This is real life, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a joke. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Thank you for stopping by. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Well, they moved me back to the building where the all the brothers are at. And I touched the carnales and they're like, all right, it's all good, don't trip. And uh, and at this time, the, the gang unit opens up a new section in Corcoran Shoe called 4B1 Left. And they put us all in one section, all the MM members, all the NF, Aaron Brotherhood, and BGF, and um, two Sureños. Two Sureños that were like the most, who they deemed the most influential in Corcoran Shoe, which was me and Baby Paya from Grape Street Watts, who, who eventually passed away. But uh, yeah, they moved us all to one section, and um, that's where they house us at. What, what happened after that, man? Yeah, we, they moved us all to 4B1 left, right? At the time, all the, everybody had got scra spread out throughout Corcoran Shoe. Corcoran Shoe, you got members, two facilities, 4A and 4B. And there's, what, uh, eight, 16 buildings in the show, in Corcoran Show. So they have it spread out. So now what Corcoran um, gang unit did was they isolated us and put us, like I mentioned, in one section, 4B, 1 left. And so they put everybody who they assumed was the most influential in one section. And uh, so they put us there in session. So it gave all of us a, t a chance to catch up. And like I said, I was just a sureño. I was just a camarada, a camarada. So... Yeah, I was not I was not a carnal, so we got there, we got to talk with Duty and Wero and everybody and uh, basically what we, we reestablished was um, me that I was gonna be like the main main voice for them for Duty and Wero. So basically my that's where I got like a, I mean people like to call it secretary. We don't call it that in the shoot, but I guess in the main lines the like the Sureños call it secretary. But I was just like a vato that communicated with all the main lines and the streets. So any orders Duty and Wero gave me Gays, like um, going to the main line or the streets, I, I did it. I took care of it. So basically my job was to, um, like they said, go. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So uh, like basically like all the Sureños that run the yards for them that are using their names, like um, Kern Valley, Salinas, New Folsom, High Desert, I, I had their confianza already, Duris and Hueros, and I had, I mean, Hueros was my cellmate, um, um, Wero from Verdugo Verde, call him Wero Verde, which is uh, Andy Ira Rodriguez, the older one, because there's a couple of Wero, people be confusing them, but this is the one that's a carnal, and of course, duty from Cucamonga, so they gave me the responsibility, so basically, anybody, any new arrivals to the shoe, they get have to get at me, so they get, they have, the, the guys in charge of all the buildings, they, they all correspond with me, they would tell me the new arrivals, what their issues were, why they came to the shoe, so anytime you get to the shoe, basically, you have to give us your name, your your placaso, your CDC number, the name of your clique, and so forth. And then that's what any time you come to prison, that's what you have to do. So in the shoot, you do the same thing. So we get a roll call. So my job was to collect all that. And again, like if duty had workers or duty or widow had workers on the main line, boom, I correspond with them and be like, hey, the brother says Simon send the money, or you guys have the best the blessings to run this facility and pick up the money, the drove whatever. Same thing was with the barrios, you know, and, and you guys out on the streets that correspond with Duty or Wero, they'll be like, get at Sneaky. And basically, that's pretty much it. Like, I mean, uh, I did all the footwork for them, you know, I laid down the groundwork. Basically, uh, I did all the dirty job, uh, everything that they did. I mean, I was their memory. I was their eyes and ears and their memory, pretty much, you know. And so, anytime, um, and as I had mentioned earlier on, is that I, I had came to the shoe with a green light years back. So I always had that empathy towards Sureños who had green lights or had issues that they wanted to bring forth to that had issues like with the mob and shit. So that if they come to the shoe, they always knew, hey, get a sneaky, he'll help you out to get a pass. And that's what I did. I always made it my name, my motto to try to help camaradas out that needed a pass because a lot of people come to the shoe with issues and say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm being accused of this and or I did this, I did this, or, you know, and I would help them out. I mean, I can give you a... A funny, a, a funny story. Like there was a camarada one time named Ross from uh, Wilma, and I remember um, he came here with issues from another prison from Mississippi. Same scenario, you know. Sally uh, got there and he said, "Hey, you know, I'm thinking he can help you." And I, right away, uh, um, I get at the carnales and I help him get, get passes. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm just saying that's just one of many camaradas. Like any any issue that comes up, 
I'll, I could help you get, get your name cleared with him, you know? Can you, can you, can you tell me, can, can you specify and give me some of the, um, give me some of the details and some of these, of these sticky situations that you've actually been presented while you were in the shoe? Like what, like people that brought up issues? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you could say, for instance, a uh, guy is running, um, let's say, for instance, this guy running a yard in, in Ironwood. Let's say, for instance, uh, his name was Temper from, uh, I think it's Barrio Pobre or something like that in SGV or Harbor area. I remember this little camarada, he came and he said, hey, I had the yard in uh, Ironwood for Rascal from uh, Rascal from Calexico and Fox from South Flows. And then when I was there, I had a yarda and some guys arrived there saying that um, that they were working for um, another, for Baby Paya from Great Shoe Watts, which is a Sureño that was the secretary for uh, a MM member from Watts. So my neighbor, Baby Paya, was no longer around. He passed away. However, he said, hey, these guys arrived there saying that they're pushing um, this agenda to be on the Mesa and Ironwood. And then they're saying that we disregarded them, and all of a sudden they're, they're putting hits on that duty, and Guero supposedly put a hit on these guys, this guy Temper. So when he gets to Corcoran Shoe, validate it, because they validate you right away in, in another prison, and they know if they hear your name, IGI, the gang unit's job is to snatch you up and put you in the hole, and then they validate you. So when he got to Corcoran Shoe, I was at visit one time, and I, and, and, and I met this guy, and it's crazy because... Every time we hear this name, obviously you're biased towards them because you hear this name like, oh, Temper, oh, he, 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 he's, he's in the hat. So when I'm, in the, when I'm at visit and I meet him and he tells me, hey, I got mail going to your building, so I'm like, hey, what's your name? And he's like, hey, my name's Temper from, from uh, Barrio. And I'm like, okay. So I get the mail and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, did you come from Ironwood? And he's like, yeah. And he's real humble. I meet this guy and I'm talking to him and I'm like, hey, man, um, you got issues, don't you? And he's like, yeah, man, they're, they're accusing me that I, that I didn't allow – that I didn't allow the guys that are there for Baby Paya to get on the mesa. And I'm like, um, and did you? He goes, nah, I never denied these guys a seat, homie. Because, okay, the, the, basically on the main line, you have a mesa, and th- th- there's five people per mesa. So being um, five different Sureños represent five different MM members to be on the mesa, opposed to back in, t- before 2005, it would only be one guy running the yard, like as a llavero, I mean, for one MM member. But, but that, that that created too much problems, so the, the Carrales made up a new thing called the Mesa, where they have five people, Sureños, representing five different MM members. That way, more MM members can get money. So at this point, this little vato, Temper, he was being accused of denying a seat on that Mesa to this, the Sureño named Baby Pass and Grave Street's worker. So when he gets there, you can't, you're not allowed to deny somebody a seat, you know, because... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It would show that you know you're not being like um, spreading the wealth. You know you're not allowed. How can you deny somebody a seat if they're asking graciously to get on a seat? You have to get grant them a seat if there's one open. And then uh, was, this guy was being accused of, of saying no. So obviously you're gonna get accused. You're gonna get in trouble for that. So when he got to the shoe, I met him and I told him, hey, we'll write your explanation now, and uh, and I'll write it up to the carnales. And he goes, okay, cool. So like again, it goes back to he said he never denied it. So it's one of those he said she said stories. Who do you believe? The guys that are saying that we try to get in the mess and this guy denied him? Or you believe Temper, who you just met personally, and he's telling you in your face he didn't do it? It's one of those things, and that's the thing. that you, That's where the hard decisions come, because you're going to trust the guy that might work for you, that you met, or you're going to trust the guy that you just met, and he's telling you to your face, hey, I didn't do this. And unfortunately, sometimes people make the wrong, bad, bad decisions and this guy temper could have got hurt. But instead I told him, you know what, I'm going to take your word for it, homie, and I'm going to speak up for you. I told the carnales, hey, homie, he seems sincere that he didn't deny the seat, homie. Give him a pass. And the carnales give him a pass. But I'm saying those are the decisions, scenarios like that, are the deci- uh, that the carnales are dealt with every single day. Like, should I give this guy a pass or not? Is he being sincere? Who, who do I believe, this guy or, or my workers? And, and that's where the, the dilemma comes. A lot of people can get in trouble for that, you know, for making the wrong choice. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people do, man. And, and, and who do you believe, you know? So, again, I spoke up for this guy because I took his word for it because he seemed like a straight-up guy. And that's what I did, you know. So, you you being back there, you know, obviously you were, you, you were, you were granted this position. What transpired after that, man? Were you aiming to maybe climb the ladder and, and aim for a higher position? Well, I mean, uh, I don't, it's, 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 you know, when you, how do you say, like, uh, that's something like, um, 
I mean, there's only like about four Sureños that are still active right now that are aware of this. Like, like I said, Guero was my, my cellmate, and he was my friend. And, um, you know, um, he was new to the mob. He was only a carnal for about 10 years before he, his demise. But, I mean, uh, yeah, naturally, of, of course, he, 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 he I, I put him, basically, the day he got made, I'm the first person to reach out to my contacts in the mainland. I contacted my little homeboy, Silent, from my neighborhood, from me side. And I put him on the mess up for Wedo to bring money in because my cellie didn't have nothing. So you got to remember, I'm the first person that brought money to my cellie's pocket. You know what I mean? And the, the last person to put money in his pocket before his demise. Um, so naturally, of course, he, 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 he promised me, like, hey, man, you know, I, I know you have it in you to do everything. And um, I know you're down for the cows. And um, don't trip. One of these days, I'm going to put your name up. And he did. He, 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 in 2013, he attempted to... Um, he attempted to circulate my name, and, and everywhere in 2013, um, he told Tudi, and he called, we had a cell phone in the shoe, and he called the Cardinal Mike Boo from uh, Norwalk, and he asked him on the street, hey, uh, what about Sneaky? And Mike Boo said, hey, he's seen me. But it never, honestly, it never went anywhere from there. I mean, you know, it never got circulated or whatever routine they go through, man. I mean, um, yeah, and I, I never mentioned it because, honestly, when you're, that you'll never you, you're never supposed to say it like if like for instance if you're up for that you're not supposed to talk about it because you have to show humility you know and uh and like i said i never asked and like i said it never came you know but yeah Wero, Wero, naturally my, my cellmate he, he he said you know when the time came that he would he would raise his hand for me man and uh you know of course i believed him you know i mean that was my friend i mean he would give me everything anything he had i had it you know what i mean money drugs and uh, like I said, authority, I mean, they gave me the confianza from day one. I mean, um, him and Duty, you know, they gave me the confidence from day one. Like, they trusted me, you know. I mean, I've showed that through and through. I mean, um, when I had my green light, I, I, I went through it, you know. Like, I, and I always told them, if I owe, I'll pay in blood, man. I ain't going nowhere. That was always my my life. I mean, at the time, I was passionate for the mob. I mean, I was for, for them, you know. No, no doubt. But, um, yeah, man, I mean. Yeah, but no, I never, I never got made, you know. You know, after you bring in the shoe, what, what else happened, man? Well, I mean, naturally, more carnales come through there. Like I said, um, Mike Booth from Norwalk came to Corcoran Shoe. He was like two cells away from me, and we always had to talk. He paroled, and then they arrested him. He got indicted, and um. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Him and then along other fellows got indicted, and then Wero. And Duty, we got caught with a cell phone in the shoe, so the gang unit, um, you know, they're, they're, they're smart. The, the gang unit, naturally, the gang unit is real sharp, and, 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 and they know the game, man, because they've heard stories through and through from different people, and they know divide and conquer is the best way. There's two carnales housed in Corcoran where I'm at, so they separated them. All of a sudden, Wedo from Verdugo gets a chrono saying that he has a relative in Corcoran shoe. I mean, he has a relative working in, in Corcoran facility. All of a sudden, he has a relative after being housed there 10, 12 years. So they move him out, and they move him to Tehachapi Shoe. When he gets housed at Tehachapi Shoe, of course, he told Duty, hey, um, Sneaky's going to continue doing everything for me and uh, running everything, collecting everything, and recruiting for me and everything. And Duty didn't agree with that. Duty thought, you're leaving. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about Sneaky. You know, and um, there was always that tug of war. Like They, they were like, Sneaky's producing money. He's working for me now and, 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 and so forth. And I'm like, yeah, nah, it don't work like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm helping out Wero because he was my celly, and I'll help you out, Tootie, because you're my homie. But there's there's no, no nobody belongs to nobody, pretty much. So Tootie, Wero gets transferred to Tehachapi, and he lands there for a couple months, and then they move Wero to Pelican Bay. But as soon as they move Wero to Pelican Bay, um, we start hearing rumors on the main line that um, Tootie is um, being requested to go to Pelican Bay. So at this time, Duty is being requested to go to Pelican Bay, and um, so me and Duty are having a rift in Corcoran because I relay the message, hey, man, um, I'm receiving correspondence from all the main lines, from, from the workers that I'm in touch with, letting me know that um, you're not really being acknowledged on the main line, that you're supposed to report to the Bay. And uh, he, he was like, yeah, I, no. You know, and um, from there on, um, he... he um, Wedo writes down to me, writes me a letter, and tells me pretty much, um, you know, hey, the cowboy fan is out. 
cowboy fan, meaning, you know, you, you, we try to use metaphors and letters or um, to, to try to avoid the, 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 the gang unit because they read out our mail, so we try to use nicknames for everybody. We try to use nicknames for everybody, so Cowboy Duty was a cowboy fan, so called him uh, Cowboy, you know what I mean? Cowboy, so uh, he said the cowboy fan is out, don't be hoodwinked by him, et cetera, et cetera. So I ignore the letter. Naturally, I'm like, yeah, this is above my pay grade. Um, I ignore it. So at this time, um, Sureños from other buildings start sending me wheelas, and uh, they're telling me, hey, we're receiving correspondence from the Bay to let you know that um, duty's out, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm ignoring this, like, nah, nah. And at this point, uh, duty, duty gets at me, and me and duty are in bad graces at this time. Me and duty aren't getting along, like, I'm not. And he gets at me in a, in a wheel, and he's like two cells away. He's like, hey, check it out. Um, um, my brother just got killed on the streets. My my brother-in-law just got killed on the streets. What's up, man? Uh, can you help me out? What's being said? Can you help me out to communicate to the Bay? I was like, no, I have no communication. Sorry. And um, yeah, man, it pretty much goes that way. So now me and Turi are headbutting. Turi circulating. We love to. You have 60 seconds remaining. So like I said, Turi kept reaching out to me to help him communicate, and I told him no. So Sureños are reaching out to me saying, hey, we're just getting word from from where on a couple of the carnales that Turi's disregarded, what's up? And at this point, uh, Turi's becoming very, literally, this is an MM member that everybody has to look up to, respect, and he's losing, honestly, he was stressed out, he's losing his mind, he's taking it out on us, man. I mean, like any little incident, he would snap on, a, on the homies and shit, so on the Sureños. And then he, and then, um, he, um, he basically said, like, there was, like, for every incident, like, a, if you get in trouble, Duri was taxing Sureños $1,000 to get a pass. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, granted, but he taxed one Sureño, then a second one, a third one. There was 16 Sureños total that he tried to tax $1,000 each. Knowing, in, him knowing in the back of his mind that he's got issues and he's trying to get $16,000 from six, I mean, $1,000 was 16 total, $1,000 from from Sureños, his camaradas that have been in the shoe for years, and he's trying to tax them to get a pass. And these Sureños are reaching out to me like, hey, Sneaky, this will keep getting at us that we have to pay the money or else. And my or else... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. By or else, meaning he's going to have them hit. So I'm just a Sureño. And keep in mind, yeah, I was given responsibilities or, or how do you say, uh, some type of authority from Wero, but that only goes so far. Remember, Wero's not there no more. Wero's in another prison. So my authority only goes so far, and again, it's just, it's not even authority, it's more like a, to like overlook these things. So again, and, and these students are all getting at me, like, hey man, this duty, duty this, duty that, and, and duty the carnal, I'm not a carnal, so I'm getting weed up from everybody. Hey, duty trying to tax us, hey, a clavo just came, um, clavo meaning some dope just came, six grams came from Calipatria. This is Sureño named um, Pelon from, from uh, 18th Street, um, North Hollywood, tells me, hey, this Turi Aklavo came for me, and Turi got it, and he stole it, homie. What's up with that? So I get at Turi, hey, Turi, um, I just got a wheel from the camarada Pelon. He said that um, perhaps maybe Aklavo came to you on accident, but it was really destined for him. It was earmarked for him, but he was still going to break you off with dirt for coming to the shoe. And Turi's like, oh, I got mine, and you know what? I have to uh, open his mouth about me, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it, and I'm just going to call it even. Like, basically, like, he'll call it even. Like, like he's not going to get mad at him, and he's going to keep a glove on calling. I'm like, Turi, come on, Turi, you don't do that to the homies, man. You know what I mean? And I, again, I'm the one that knows him the best, and I'm able to talk to him, like, in his level, even though I'm not his level, but I'm not his equal, but he respected me at the time. And, you know, so I get to talk to him like, like a normal person, like, like a, 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 a homie would to another homie. And then he's like, but he's giving me all these shenanigan excuses. And I'm like, hey, Turi, you're not like that, homie. Why are you tripping the homies like this? And he's like, nah, man, these, these vatos did this. Their vatos talking about me. So I'm like, all right, cool. So at this point, he has a Sureño hit. He shoots word to have one of the Sureños tanks from El Monte Flores hit. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I'm like, Turi, what's that about? And he's like, nah, there's vatos in his mouth about me. So I had him hit. And I'm like, Turi. I'm like, all right, man. I go, hey, this is probably the reason they're asking you to go to the bay to report and, and find out if, if everything you're being accused of is true. So, no, no, no. So, at this point, again, Sureño hit me with some letters. And this time, it was a, it was a, 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 a Wero used to call me Fortivo in Spanish. My name's Sneaky, and Fortivo in Spanish. So, he said, tell Fortivo that duty is out. Do not be hoodwinked by him. I will not ask again. So, I'm like, oh, man. So, then I go again. 
like go up to Thuri and I said, hey, Thuri, they're, they're, they're saying you're disregarded, homie, Stempa. And um, we tell them, homie, hey, Thuri, um, I'm sorry, fool, fucking, um, this is what's going, this is what's about, homie, the whole man is disregarding you. All the yards in Corcoran are being taken over by other carnales because they're saying you have no authority. You're getting Sureños hit. You're taxing Sureños. You're, 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 you're not being yourself, homie, so... We're just gonna take it upon ourselves, homie, and I'm gonna let the camaradas know that that, that you're right now you're on hold, homie, you know, dispensa. And I all the Sureños in Corcoran Shoe were advised of this and they all agreed to it, homie. Not one person rejected this, you know what I mean? Every single Sureño were on board with it, they said, Cool and and I, I, I sent word to every single block in the shoe and I said, Check it out. From here on, if your building hits clavo, get the clavo, sell it and I'm going to give you five CDC numbers to five different carnales so you can send them money in rotation. And this goes to every building. Do not send the dope to me. This is about you guys. And I just wanted to make it clear that there's no hidden agenda on my end. I want to keep things open. There's transparency. I want all of you guys to do the right thing, dude. So please keep each other abreast of what's going on. And, again, we're going to do this like for the fellas up in the Bay to make everything sure everything goes down smooth. And that's what we did, man. I mean, uh, we took over the prison and uh, um, and then and, and earmarked everything for the bay, you know. The so West House fired after that, man. What what, what happened? happened with him? What happened? What happened with his situation, man? With duties? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What happened with that? Well, with duty, um. He stood there, and of course, he drained my life. He said that if he ever comes back from this, that I'm done, and fuck all this. And I said, that's understandable. And he asked me one favor, though. He goes, can I ask you a favor? When you go to the bay, can you let the fellas know that my sister's not involved in anything? Because I don't want them to, for nothing to happen to her. And I said, sure. And at this time, um, they started closing down Corcoran Shoe, and they transferred all of us to Pelican Bay Shoe. And at this time, I go to Pelican Bay Shoe, and, uh, and when I'm close to the shoe... Uh, I get up there to the bay, and uh, I talk to the fellas up there, and uh, um, I, I, I'm well put to sell more to try to move in with me right away, and uh, it didn't go through, because in Pelican Bay, it's very hard to get cellmates. It's like, um, uh, yeah, it's very hard to get in. Over Pelican Bay, like 99% of the people are single cell in the shoe in Pelican Bay. So um, when I got up there, they um, Wedo tried to move me to his unit. He was in Delta 2, which is D2, the short corridor, and... Um, I was in the drain talking to the fellows, and I explained everything that happened, and uh, apparently everybody knew already it was going around, being uh, passed around what had happened in Corcoran Shoe with me and Duty. And uh, to this very day, um, Duty is um, is um, 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 disregard status. They have him in a, a, a program called the RCGP, the Restrictive, Restrictive Confinement General Population, and they keep you, like, housed. Like, you're a person that you don't want to go to protective custody, but you kind of go to the main line because something's going to happen to you. And then my cellmate, Wero, from my ex-cellmate, Wero from Verdugo, um, he, um, he, 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 um, passed away in the Bay and, um, his wife, um, Carmen, he has, um, was murdered on the street. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, um, it pretty much went pretty bad, you know, for everybody, you know, but, um, you know, um, bad circumstances. And what, and what happened with you, man? What happened with you after that? Well, when I got kicked out, I was in the shoe, right? So when you're in the shoe, you land in a unit. And when I landed in the bay, like I said, I did all my explaining. I talked to all the fellas. Um, so as soon as you get there, in, a, in each building, in each section, they have like a thing called like a porter, right? So in one section, you're assigned to come on two days a week. And you clean all day. And um, so I got as soon as I got there to the bay, they, they, my fellas, uh, the fellas assigned me to uh, be a porter so I can run around all day. And um, so they, the, the fellas in my unit trusted me, so they were like, hey, go ahead, because that way you can run around all day. So I, I, I was out there running around. I get to, I hide the fierros. You know, you do all the passing, fishing, yelling. Well, my aim yelling because you communicate through a drain. In Pelican Bay, there's a drain on the floor, and you're able to communicate with all of the units. And uh, you're able to yell, and you, you know, you'll see pass messages. And uh, so I was up there, and when I was up there, you know, I mean, um, I ran into some old man named uh, Wero from uh, San Diego, an old man. And I, this guy was married to a, a 
a, a distant family member of mine from years ago. And um, so I knew who this guy was. When as soon as I got there, he, he, he asked me, are you, are, 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 you, are you sneaky? You know, I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, man, I know you. I know you're sneaky. And I was like, all right. I was like, all right. So when I'm up there, he's like about 54 years old, little guy, old man, old man. And uh, he had issues. He was a QB now. He was saying that, you know, he had issues. He, he had, um, he was saying that somebody was a rat and, um, and it didn't work out well for that person, for him, because for bringing up these allegations and, uh, so, um, he was, he was in bad standing himself, you know, and, uh, so when we got there, they told us, hey, um, smash this guy if you, if the opportunity arises. I said, oh, no problem. So I was like, I talking to this guy, this guy didn't have nothing, like literally nothing. He didn't go to store, he didn't have nothing, but... I had just got there, so I didn't have nothing myself. I ordered my package. I got out my stuff. I was waiting for my stuff to get there. I had just got there literally like three days. And um, this guy was giving me, like, all his lunches because he knew I was hungry. He had he sacrificed it to me. Like, usually the other guys that got there, when I got, they all look out for you, give you jars of coffee. They give you because they have so much of it. But this guy didn't have anything, and he was giving me everything. You get what I'm saying? Like, you get three meals a day, and you get you will sacrifice one meal just to give it to me. You know, like, here, because, he, he, you know, he liked me. And so, like I said, he was married to somebody in my family a long time ago. So I, you know, I used to feel bad. Like, man, I feel bad, man. Poor old man, you know. But he was hella cool, been around for a long time. So I'm chopping it up with him. And at this point, I get a letter from my homies. <laughs> and my homie, my homie in the streets, um, he writes me a letter. And he's like, hey, um, try to change your life. You know, we got a couple of homies that we grew up with. And, um, you know, they, 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 they got out. They were lifers like you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to get out. Dude, I'm a lifer. And I got so much violence in my and P file and along with ten thirty, which is confidential information of people are always telling on me. So I was like, Yeah, it's not gonna happen. But then I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna at least try getting my G D since I'm in the shoe. And I've been in the shoe this whole time, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna try. So I signed up to for the G D and at this point the teacher comes to see you in the bay when in the bay all the doors open so they pop me out in the shoe and I go talk to the teacher. And while I'm talking to the teacher, the door behind I hear a door behind me opening. And I turn around, and it's the yard door. And it's that old man, Weddle, coming out of the yard, about to go back in his cell. But the cop forgot that I was in the day room talking to the teacher. So I turn around, and I look, and I look at the tower, and the tower's not even paying attention. And this guy, this guy Weddle's walking straight towards me. He doesn't know what's going on, that he's in bad standing. And I see him, and my first instinct is like, I'm going to smash this. How could I not? He's 54 years old. You know what I mean? And I'm in good condition. I'm like, oh, yeah. And as he's getting closer, I'm like, all right, I can feel my adrenaline rushing. And I'm like, all right, it's full time. And then he comes up to me, and he, and he hugs me. He's like, oh, mijo, it's good to see you, man. You know, I'm, I mean, good to finally meet you in person. And, you know, and then I was like, all right, man. And I give him a hug. And the, even the teacher knew that two people being out at the same time in the day room is not allowable. And he was walking back, dude, and I was just like, you know, like I froze. For the first time in my life, I froze. I always, I felt bad for this dude. I mean, like, for one the stuff that he was being accused of, I didn't think it was right to him. And second of all, it's like, I don't know, man, like, like I, I never had a, 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 a to look being twice, like, having a conscience, so to speak, but this guy, he, he, he did, uh, he was real polite to me, real humble, and, like, I didn't have no hate towards him, so, like, like usually, you, you, you try to, like, picture, like, anytime you go stab somebody, you envision, like, this hate towards this person, or smash this fool, but I didn't have that for this person, and I couldn't picture myself, like, like, in my mind, I had him picture, like, like, nah, I couldn't do it. And I froze it. And when I went back into my cell, I came back to my cell, and I had a math book in my hand. And I went in, and the food, I closed the door. And my neighbor knocked, an old man named Topo from Planton. He had a B number. He's been down since, like, 1978. And he knocks on the door, and he's like, hey, Sneaky, are you all right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, all right. And I go, all right now, homie. And I knew, you know, he asked me if I'm all right, meaning, like, This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He meant, like, are you all right? Meaning, like, what happened before you froze, you know? Like, and uh, I didn't say nothing for the whole day. And uh, the, You have 60 seconds remaining. I don't, all I know about this guy is that he married a relative of mine, like, over 20 years ago. And I, think, I haven't even been in touch with this relative. But this guy, you know, like I said, he gave me everything he had. Like, like you know, like, like, like I said, everything he had. And, like, it's probably nothing, a sack lunch, nothing. But it's something because he don't have it. He gave it to me. And like I said, all these other guys around me gave me everything because they had it. So anyways, I was just like, Damn. and in my mind, I'm thinking, right, to the fellas, because people are going to start asking. My neighbor didn't ask. He was being polite. But 
the younger guys, which are the pit bulls, you know, they're going to be asking, like, hey, homie, what happened, homie? They're going to be asking, like, what happened? And so, sure enough, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm racing, I'm trying to kind of come up with an excuse or a scenario to tell them. And I'm thinking, dude, you know, and I, I know if I, no matter what excuse I tell them, it, all it is is an excuse. You're still going to, you're still going to have to answer up for it, you know? People are going to be mad. Why didn't you hit this dude? Or why didn't you smash him? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? So either I'm going to get stabbed or very yelled at. You know, my career wasn't over. It's not, you don't get, in, you don't get that in trouble for it, but, you know, you're going to get in trouble. So yelled at, looked at that, sound upon, whatever you want to call it. It's, you're going to be looked at wrong because you froze. That's weakness in prison. You never show weakness. One thing people don't respect are cowards, you know? So... Sure enough, I was just like, fuck, what do I say, what do I say? And honestly, I could have came up with so many excuses because I've heard so many excuses, and I could have. And I'm, I'm not a dumb person in that sense, but I was like, you know what, I don't even do it. I'm cool, I'm cool. You know, like, honestly, and if people say they get tired of prison, I didn't get tired of it. I just grew up, you know, like, like um, you develop feelings, you develop things that you didn't have before. And, like, honestly, like, None of this to me, and I, oh, and I forgot to mention that in uh, 2014, right before I went to the Bay, I stopped using drugs. So again, I, I was sober when all this was going on. So again, more things ever made sense to me. And again, I have been high for all my life, you know, before this. Before 2014, I was getting high every single day. So a, a lot of it didn't matter to me. That's why it was like I was numb to the, of the idea of prison to begin with. So now I'm sober, and again, everything's clarity, I'm, everything's making sense now. I'm like, oh, man, this is nothing, you know? And then all of a sudden, this happens, and I'm like, man, you know, this ain't even worth it. Like, I'm in prison. You know, again, I'm sober, so I'm like, man, I'm in, I feel like I'm in prison. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You know, and that's another thing. If, if, if I wasn't used to doing my time alone, you know, I've, I've mastered for all these years with drugs, so I've, I was not used to doing time. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, I don't really it. So at this point... They have a, a the Ashker settlement happens, which means uh, Ashker versus California, which means a lawsuit happened to the CDC where they sued the CDC to say that they're not allowed to have people validated in the shoe no more. So they we all went to committee and they kicked us all out to the main line, everybody. So I got kicked out and I landed on a, oh and before I got kicked out of the shoe, I told that old man Wedo like, hey, by the way, um, hey, you have a green light, fool, take care of yourself. I I gave him a heads up like, hey man, take care of man and um, you know. Take care of yourself, man. And I left, and I got kicked out to the mainland. I went to a yard in the bay, and when I landed up there, I seen a couple of the fellows, the carnales, and um, they they got at me and they said, "Hey, um, try try to stay away from Wero for right now." And I said, "What?" They go, "Yeah, stay away from him for right now." I was like, "All right." And Wero was on B yard. I, I landed on a yard. The carnal Wero from Verdugo was on B yard, and then when I go to committee, they tell me, "Hey, um, you're um." You're going to go to B yard because you have an enemy in your house on A yard. So I said, all right. So as I was going to B yard, I told the cops, hey, you know what? I'm cool, man. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I don't want to be. I don't want to be active no more, man. I'm. I'm gonna step away from all this. And they're like, what? Now we're gonna take you over there. I said, I'm not, man. I don't want to go no more. I'm. I'm cool, man. I, I don't. I don't want to. They go, you know, if you if you choose to go, we're not to put you in protective custody. I said, that's fine, man. I can live with that. You know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'm all right, man. I'll, I'll. I'll. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go, man. And they said, okay, and then they fucking put me in the hole. They put me in the hole, and they sent me to the THU, which is a transitional housing unit. And uh, that's where I went. How was that like for you? How was that like for you finally taking that last final initial step? And you know what, saying, you know what, I want to change my life. You know, it was the hardest thing ever, dude, but I have family that I watch grow up. I mean, I have family that I watch grow up. And uh, and I, I got family that I, I watched grow up, dude, and, and, and they were babies when I came to prison, and now they're adults, dude, and, 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 and as I'm looking at all this, and, I, and, I, and, I, and as I look at this to sobriety, it's, it's, as I look at this to sobriety, dude, it's, 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 it's like, man, dude, like, like I really sacrificed all this for them, you know, like all this for what, you know, like, I can't remember, I, I've been in and out of the hole, and I was back in the hole for over 12 years for the last time. But I was in the hole that for four years, three years there, three years there. I never really got to get a whole visit. I never got to hold my family. And I'm watching my family get old, dude, all of them. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, dude, like, like, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm looking to myself like, damn, dude, like, 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 and again, I'm sober. So that's, it's like, 
man, dude, I'm missing out on all my family, dude. And then, like I said, uh, man, you see laws change, laws change, laws change, and then uh, um, laws change, and and and, and I, before I was never eligible to go home, you know, like like it was a, a new bill that passed out called Senate Bill 260, and then like laws change, like I actually have a chance to go home, and here I'm because of what, like pride or. Because somebody else has a green light, and somebody else doesn't like this guy that's right here in my pod, in my section. And it's like, man, so I, I mean, I, I want to say the decision was easy, but it was, in reality, it was hard. I mean, I, didn't, I did not cry when I got sentenced to life as a juvenile. I did not cry at all, not at one tear shed. But the day I dropped out of, gang, of, of prison and they put me in the hole for that one day, dude, I cried, dude, all night. And I, I cried myself to sleep thinking, man, what did I do? Should I go back? I, this is not me, dude. Like, like. Like, like, I, 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 I have this hate. I, I have hate. Hate is what got me through my life sentence. You know what I'm saying? Hate is what got me through over 20 years in prison. It's like having that hate. You have to. You have to have hate in your heart to to survive. You have to be crazy in prison to survive. You do. You just, and I, I just didn't have that no more. So if I even stuck around it on the man, I'd be lying to myself that I, I that, that that hate, that, that hate that fuels me, I don't have it no more. So it's like, it, it gets it gets easier as time goes on. Like right now, I'm I'm happy. Like like I got no weight on my shoulder. I have nothing to worry about but myself. If I get in trouble right now, it's because of my own fault. But before, if I got in trouble, it was because I was asked to. And now it's like I'm responsible for. I'm accountable for my own actions. It's like it's it's, it's like I said. It's 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 the hardest decision, but it was easy, dude. I mean, all you have to tell the cops is say, you know what, I'm cool and all this, man. And they 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 take you to the THU if you were validated. You know, I mean. It's, 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 that's a decision everybody has to make. Of course, like I said, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be right here, I'd tell you, I, I'd take off on you. I would try to stab you for even hinting the thought of me being a coward. People can call me a coward. That I, I can be all that, but I have a family, you know, and, and I'm going to go home one day, and I hope I go home. I'm going to earn my freedom one day, but it's like you have to. That's a decision a person has to make, you know. I mean, I conformed. I conform to somebody's rules and way of life, of living just so I can fit in, dude. I mean, how how is that tough? Like, guys on the street that are putting in work and doing all this, you come to prison and you're told what time to wake up, what time to do this, what time to do that. And I'm not even down, I'm not even trying to offend the fellas on the mainland. I have all my respect for them guys. I, You know, they don't have to worry about me going to court against them. I, I just want to go home. You know, and I'm telling my story. My, it's my story. It's not my story to tell it about them because of that, I would give you more details. I was studied with a carnal for years. I knew many details. I left all that out. I'm only telling my story from what happened on my 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 eyes. My story had to go through to get me where I'm at now. Now I'm in high school. I mean, I got my GED. I'm in college. I'm doing self-help programs. I'm staying out the way. I've been disciplinary free for five years. I have not got in trouble once. What does that say, you know? I mean, I couldn't even do that before, you know? Okay. Now, can you tell someone, maybe perhaps somebody, that, somebody that, that's in your position or that was in your position, someone that's been in there incarcerated for 20 years, 15 years, you know, who's, who's, who, who might have a chance at parole, man? You know, what can you tell that person who, who might be considering changing their lives around as well? That are still active or on this side where I'm at? That are still active. You know what? I mean, um, man, I mean, I, I hope everybody goes home. I mean, um, you, you, everybody, I didn't know what impulsive was till I came to this side. And what I mean is because on this side, there's a lot of people who um, never learned rules. And by rules on the mainland, you have rules. You know, you're not allowed to act a child. You're not allowed to be impulsive. You're not allowed to just randomly take off on somebody for no reason. On this side, people take off on each other and stare like if it was juvenile hall, you know. So a lot of people lack that, um, what, what someone would call common sense or sense of respect. They lack that on this side, you know. So, I mean, you know, if, if a person is not impulsive, man, go try to earn your freedom, dude. I mean, uh, I can't, con- I'm not, I would, I can't convince somebody to come to this side. I can, I can only ask somebody to try to do the better thing, better, try to. You know, if your mom was there, dude, how would you want her looking at you, dude? I mean, if your mom passed away, you know, is that what you want her to remember you by, like, uh, for the rest of your life? I mean, you know, I mean, uh, um, try to earn your freedom, dude. I mean, and you're not going to do it being in gangs and, and, and trying to manipulate the system. You can't. It, it just doesn't work that way, you know? I mean, you, you, you have to be a better person. I mean, a better you. I mean, 
you know, the, you can't can't have hidden agendas. You have to try to. That's pretty much it. I mean, you have to try to be a better person, dude. I mean, you know, it's, that's all I can say. So, uh, are this you call allowed? and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Are you a lot happier having walked away from all this now? Is there any regret? I think the, the first year there was everyday regrets, you know, because on this side they have gangs, S and Y gangs, or DC gangs, and of course they kind of like this is this this illusions like damn because you know I mean there's no doubt I mean everybody makes enemies. You know, I made enemies in my lifetime, and of course, and unfortunately, some of them are from the S and Y gangs. And of course, let's say they feel some way towards me. Now, you, they, it's not just them you have to deal with; it's that their group. But I mean, you know, you know what? After talking to them, and I and I always tell people, there's nothing that I, that cannot be settled with convert with dialogue, dude. And I and I'm a grown man, and you know what? If I and this is what I tell people: if I offended you or disrespected you, I will be the first one to apologize. I'm a man enough to apologize. But if you put your hands on me, it changes everything. You know what I mean? It, unfortunately, if you put your hands on me and my life's in danger, then I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to sacrifice everything I did to show you that you shouldn't have done that. You know? Have you ever, have there ever been a situation where, like you just mentioned right now, where on the main line, perhaps you you had to hit them or or you know they got green light or whatnot, they got put in a sick situation and you had to actually meet that person on, on the SNY yard. Like you're basically, like you just said. This, this happened a week later. I'm seeing him in the THU, the transitional housing unit. Oh, man. What happened? What, what happened? A, a, a week later, and, and, and at the time, I'm like, oh, man, he's living right upstairs from me. You have 60 seconds remaining. After I, I um, stepped away from gangs, they put me in the THU, which is a transitional housing unit. So I get there, and right above me is this vato from the Google. And I'm like, wow. Oh, Johnny, so I'm like, hey, fool. I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I was like, I put a green light on him, and then I look, and I'm like, well, I put a green light on him, too, and you had a feed mess, from, feed mess from Black Angels on video, him, too, I put a green light on him, and I'm like, all right, cool, so boom, they, we, we go to committee, and they crack me out, and I'm at their room sitting down, and then here comes the bottle from Merdu, and I'm like, oh, great, he's drunk at that, you know, you know when you're drunk, it gives you that liquid courage, so I sit down, and I'm sitting down, and he comes up to me, and he's like, what's up, big dog? And I'm like, all right, now, and I shake his hand, and he's like, hey, you got a sick? I'm like, yeah, and he's like, hey, check it out. Uh, um, hey, man, you know, he's explaining to himself still, like, if we're in the mainland, you're like, hey, who guys accuse me of? I didn't do that, homie. My hyena's the one that took the money, not me, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, huh. I'm like, oh, he's still people. I was like, I, I really didn't care about why, why he had a green light. My concern was moving forward from here on, huh? you know what I mean? Like, okay, what happened back then? So I'm like, hey, look, fool, what happened back then? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not active no more, but I, uh, I will say, uh, um, you know, with, with the bygones be bygones on my part, homie. I mean, uh, I got nothing towards you, you know, charge it to the game, homie. So, you know, like, what do you want to do from here, fool? Like, I have nothing against you, fool. Where do you stand? And he's like, I got nothing against you either, fool. And I said, all right, cool. And that was it. I mean, it was that simple. I mean, at the end of the day, and I always tell people, nobody wants confrontation. I mean, no matter how Billy badass you are, nobody wants confrontation because you don't know how extreme or what to what degree that person is willing to go. I mean, if you cross over to this side, chances are you don't want to get in trouble no more. Not that not going to go for everybody. I'm just saying for some. And luckily this was that some, you know, and he, he didn't want to get in trouble. So I'm like, all right, cool, we shook hands. Now the other guy feeds me from Black Angels. Nah, he didn't. He rolled it up again in the CHU. He left. He told the cops he couldn't be there. And this guy's twice my size. And I'm glad. Apparently, he had some ill will towards me because he left. Instead of trying to talk about it like a man, I have nothing. And I always tell people I have nothing against anybody. What happened on the main line stayed on the main line. And for the most part, I can sit, sit here right now with my conscience clear that I was not a bad person. Like I said, my job, and I took it upon myself to help people explain themselves to the carnales to help them get a pass. So I can sleep at night with my conscience clear, knowing that I don't have that much enemies. And the couple enemies I have, and, and it's crazy to say, you know, they, they broke the rules. They knew the rules from the active side. You can't do this, you can't do that. Plain and simple. You broke the rules, so you, you had to be disciplined. I didn't come after them. This is I didn't write the rules. The rules were there. They broke them. So it's like, hey, man, if you got green eye, chances are you had it coming. However, 
everybody else, I, I don't have enemies on this side. And this is why it's been smooth sailing for me on this side because a lot of people say, even the little gangs on this side, they're like, oh, yeah, he helped my homie get a pass. Oh, yeah, I, I heard of him. He helped my homie get a pass. And that's how I want to be seen, like, hey, a voice of reason. And on this side, and for that little voice of reason that I provided in the past, it, there's groups of gangs on this side that escalated into an issue, and then they came and told me about it. And I gave them advice, and I said, hey, look, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you what I used to tell the homies on the main line. If it's not... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. The advice I used to always tell the homies on the main line, if it's not worth stabbing over, you let it go. And I'm going to be honest with you, hardly nothing is worth stabbing over, dude. Hardly anything is worth stabbing over. You know what I mean? So, so at the end of the day, it's like... Um, you know, a lot of people let me on this side, dude. They really do. After I give them advice, and, and I don't, and you know what's crazy is helping people it's, it's solve their issues helps me get through because I feel like, oh, I, I, just, I was able to accomplish something by helping these people diffuse something. You know what I mean? It, 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 so that works out for me, dude. I mean, like, I, I use my negative influence in the past as a positive on this side to say, like, oh, look, hey, get us sneaky. He knows what's up. And I give these guys advice. And I never, I will never tell these guys no. And I will always give advice because. Hey, man, if I help you guys resolve one issue, cool. It doesn't disrupt our program, and at least you guys can say, oh, that guy's cool right there, you know? And it's true, man. Nothing is worth, if it's nothing, if you, nothing is worth, like I said, if it's not worth stabbing over the issue, you let it go. And nothing, like I said, nothing is worth stabbing over. You know what I mean? So what are your goals now? What are your, what, what are your goals now? Where is your mind at now? What what's up what's up with sneaky now, man? What what what, what are your uh, goals? I go I, I go by I go by a bunch now. My my first name is Francisco, but uh yeah no no I mean yeah I mean the first thing was trying to let go of my my nickname and it's like when I came over to this site I introduced myself as Francisco, but it's funny because I knew a lot of guys on this site so they were like oh that's sneaky he's trying to change his name I'm like no I didn't change my name that's my first name I'm not hiding anything guys I'm just going by my first name. You know, I kind of feel weird being 40 years old, being still called sneaky. No, but uh, no. Now my my whole my whole thing is trying to earn my freedom because I don't deserve it. I mean, face it, I'm in prison for killing somebody. I'm trying to earn my freedom now, and by, and and I'm letting my C file do the talking for me. Let, like I said, let the action speak louder than words. I'm going. To, I I got my GD. I'm in college right now. I'm trying to get a degree. I'm trying to be a counselor if I get out. Hopefully, mentor at risk youth. To you know, help them prevent what I have to go through. You know, there's, I'd rather ch show people to learn from other people's mistakes instead of your own, because hey, that saves people a lot of headaches. And then, I, and I'm trying to do that. I'm in college right now. I go to self-help programs like AANA, Criminal Game Member Anonymous, um, you know, Anger Management, Creative Conflict Resolution, Prisoners of Peace. I mean, I'm going through all these things now, and I'm trying to earn my freedom. And I mean, um, yeah, man, I want to go home with my family, dude. I mean, you know. I, I probably was a terrible. I, I, I was an absent parent growing. You know, I, I didn't have. I wasn't a, a parent to my children. But I want to be a better gra grandfather. I got grandkids. I want to be a grandfather, dude. I want to be a good grandfather. I want to be there for them. I want to do everything that I missed out on, dude. I don't even know what a walk in the park is. I don't know watching the sunset. I haven't seen the sun in, you know, other than uh, when I go to yard for two hours a day. You know? I mean, I want to do other things that you see on TV that white people do. You know. You know, yeah, I want to do all that. I want to learn. I want to learn how to swim. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Like I don't know how. To... What can you tell? What, what what's one last message you can tell the youth, somebody that's out there, you know, going down the wrong, going down the wrong. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. What can you tell someone that's perhaps going down the wrong path, perhaps going down the same footsteps that you that you did? What's one last thing you can tell that person? You know, you know what I find it odd, right? Okay, like if I go, if you go up to one of these little kids right now, let's say a 15 year old gang member, and you tell him, "Hey, what would you do if I just disrespected your mom right now? Call, straight up, call her out of her name. What would you do?" And no, he's going to tell me I would take off on you for disrespecting my mom. I'm going to say, okay, cool. So why do you disrespect your mom? You know what I'm saying? Like, people, dis I would tell them, stop disrespecting your parents, dude. They've been your age. You've never been theirs. If they tell you you're doing the wrong thing, chances are you are, dude. Straight up. 
And if you're going to do something and you got that little weird gut feeling in your stomach, and chances are that the things you're doing is wrong, dude. Follow your conscience, dude. Do the right thing. Change, change your life. Somebody gives you advice and it's good. Embrace it. I mean, listen, watch other people's mistakes because that's what you're going to do. When, as you get older, you're going to start watching people, people doing things. You're going to be like, oh, that's wrong. What an idiot. Oh, I know better than that. Be that kid to pay attention and do the right thing. Do it. I mean, change your life. I mean, if you're hearing this story of mine, it's just to show you like, hey, man, I've had to go through just to learn my lesson. I've been in prison since I was 17 years old. You know, and I, I lasted over 20 years active as a gang member. I'm 40 years old now. You know, I mean, look how long it took me to change my life. And when I went to my juvenile board hearing, and I thought, oh, okay, you know what, I, I came to this side. They're going to think that I'm a better person. No, they told me, you're, you're being denied your freedom right now because when you were active, you stabbed these people, and you had these people stabbed. And just know that everything has consequences. Just because it's in the past and you stop doing it doesn't mean it's not going to catch up and haunt you. Change your life, dude. Make better decisions. Don't use drugs. Stop trying to pull homies because they're not your homies. Trust me. The first year I was incarcerated, not one of my homies wrote me. The person that helped me buy my television when I first came to prison was my mom and my dad. They didn't have no money, but they found a way to get the money. It did change your life, dude. I mean, straight up. If you don't have homies, yeah, I'm not here to tell you that your homies are this and that. Nah, just they're not going to be there for you. Yeah, they're your homies when you're, when you're there, but when you're not there, out of sight, out of mind, dude. Change your life, or be with your girlfriend or whatever you're into. Try to find, your, find another way to entertain yourself, man. Change your life. And if you want to be in prison, trust me, there's a cell waiting for you. There always is. There's always a cell waiting for you. And, um, you know, you know, figure it out, man. You feel like you guys still have a chance out there. And if, and if you don't take it, you're going to take your life for granted, do so, man. Like I said, there's always a bunk waiting for you in prison, man.